everybody and welcome back to another video. I'm pretty sure this might be the last video of the year. Still deciding if I want to do a Christmas haul or not. Uh, we will see at the end when end of December comes. Uh, I decided that this might be my last one for this year because I know you guys are used to seeing me do advent calendars, um, doing socks, doing challenges and stuff. And that was a lot of fun years past, but it's a lot harder for me to make those videos when I'm doing stuff with my family and trying to just enjoy myself. And since this is not a job that I get paid for, it's just a hobby, I would prefer to spend it with my family than trying to exhaust myself out by the new year. And so we're going to get into today's video of me showing you guys some of my books. These are the books that I am currently reading for sophomores. I actually finished them either at the beginning of last week or the end of the week before that. I can't remember. I just know that they're on a huge, like, project that is considered their test. And three of these books were technically on that list, but only two of them I actually read for students. And the last one was for my peer enjoyment. So we're going to go with the first one here and this one I actually bought because I couldn't find it anywhere and I wasn't sure if I was gonna be able to read it or not so this is actually my first book that I purchased for my own book collection if you can't see what it is it is Jake reinvented by Gordon Corman it was published in 920 2803. I'm reading off my little label here that I use for my bookmarks. And um, it originally cost $16 when it came out, but I bought it for $5 off of eBay, which is pretty much a score considering where it used to be on Goodreads. It's labeled as a 3.3 star book. I don't remember if I gave it that high of a rating just because the reading level for me was too easy because the reading level for this is seventh grade and up and I felt like yeah it felt like a middle school book and I wasn't really digging it that much so I could have given a higher score if maybe it was a little bit harder um if you don't know what this book is I'm, apparently a lot of people do but this is a book about basically just making a modern day great Gatsby and it's about, not from the Gatsby's point of view, but this guy, his name is Rick. He's on the football team senior year. And this new guy comes into his football team. His name is Jake. Um, they don't know a lot about him, but he likes to throw really great parties every Friday. And they tend to be very chaotic. And he, they're trying to figure out what is so suspicious about Jake and there is um i want to say that this may be appropriate for more high school level than middle school level just for what is talking about is that there's um there's alcohol involved partying to the extreme maybe some inappropriate stuff that i wouldn't consider maybe a middle schooler wanting to read but um, uh, it was a quick read. It only, I think it only has what, like, I'm trying to zoom through this real quick. 17 chapters. So if you're looking for a small book to read, I would highly suggest this, but if you're looking for something a little bit more, um, adult-like to read, because maybe you're not a child at heart or you find reading levels that, that kids read a little bit too easy for you i would consider if you haven't or even if you have and maybe it's been forever to read or reread the great gatsby by uh fritz gerald is it fritz gerald i will have to look up the author and make sure that i'm correct on that and try that one out because i have that one on my list too to read and then i might do a comparison on that book i forgot to mention because i did this in my last book video which was actually just my last video um i read this book for one two 
three, four students in the class. I have five in there, and th this other book here I only read for one of my students because he said when we were picking books, I said, why don't you pick Jake Reinvented? You know, it's really easy, really fast paced, and you'll be able to get it done with everybody else. And he said, I don't care what kind of book you give me. Just make sure it's not boring. So, of course, you know, the teacher gives him the most non-boring book ever and probably my most favorite book that I have read so far out of all the books that I have read this year. And that includes the books from the last video. I think this one was probably one of my favorites. Um, it's this book right here. It's With the Fire on High. And that is by Elizabeth H. Vido. <laughs> I don't know if I said that correctly. Uh, it was published on June 7th, 2019. So like a year after I graduated. So of course I wouldn't have known about this book. And um, this book, when it came out, it was originally $18. But this is a copy that I got from the library. I wish I had a my own copy because it, it was truly a great book. Uh, the reading level is grade 9 and up which is a great place to be it's for high school level and up because um I don't say there's anything questionable in it I would just say that I don't know there was a 4.2 star rating on Goodreads I rated it a 5 because I could not put my hands down and they do when when they do reading in sophomore classes, at least for mine, they would do uh, weekly targets, not quarter targets like my juniors do. And I always met the weekly targets and I wanted to read past that, but I wanted to be able to stop to make sure that my students were able to read as well. This is following a girl. Her name is Imani. Um, she is a teen mom to a baby named Emma. And it basically follows her life her senior year of wanting to um, join new things and try new things. She has a passion for cooking and she lives with her abuela because her mom died at childbirth and her dad had like wanting nothing to do with her. And she ended up being pregnant with a guy named Tyrone at a very young age. And so it just goes around how she raises her kid, how she handles senior year, handling her job, and then falling in love with this cooking class and taking a trip to Spain with the guy she may or may not fall in love with. Now, this book that I have here, it was in the, we did a book tasting for the sophomore class of what they wanted to read and stuff. And this was one of the books that they, one of the groups ended up getting and none of my students had it, but it was very interesting for me. And then we were at a bookstore and my sister said, pick a book for me to read. And this book was on the shelf. Not this version, but it was like a paperback copy. And I bought it for her for her to read. And of course, you know, she's only read a couple chapters and probably given up on it by now. But I am like halfway through, I think. I'm like on the 14th, 15th chapter of it. It would be this book right here. And I think this one's really good too. This is Educated. It is by Tara Westover. It is a memoir about her life, about how she grew up as a Mormon and she was very sheltered. And then she wanted to pursue school and basically how she came before all of this to writing her book. And it, I think it was a little hard for me to get into at first, but the more I got into it, it started to come together more as a story about her and just everything she went through. Uh, this was originally published on February 18th, 2018. So right before I graduated high school, it's a number one New York Times bestseller. Uh, it originally cost $28 when it first came out. I bought the book for my sister at $17. So it went down a little bit, but then again, it was from a used bookstore and time has passed a little bit, unfortunately. Let's see. Uh, I didn't. There was another copy. I wasn't able to buy it for myself, but I really wanted to 
So I got a copy from the library and I may steal that copy back from my sister if she chooses not to read it all the way because I would love to add this book to my collection. This is a reading level of grade 10 and up. So for juniors and up because you got to understand how to read a memoir and be able to understand that yes, this is a non-fiction book because everything in it is real. And for it to be in a sophomore class, I think more of the, the I want to say gifted and talented kids were reading this book. And I didn't think I could, but I can. And on the Goodreads scale, it would be at a 4.4 .4 star. I have yet to rate it because I'm not finished with it. I'm like halfway there, as you can tell by the book here and where the marker is. I will try to link my Goodreads account down below in case y'all want to become friends or something and or just see my progress with these books and see my reviews on them and what I rate them when they're done because I don't know if I'll be able to update you guys in remembering in future videos of my ratings but so far I would rate this probably like a four not a five because it didn't it hasn't necessarily grabbed me yet, but we will see. Now, I don't have a book collection. When I was younger, I had trouble reading. And as I got into high school, I really had a hard time reading. And audiobooks weren't necessarily pushed for students to try and use it if they had trouble reading. Because I wasn't diagnosed with anything that said I had trouble reading. Uh, so I had to be kind of like doing the reading outside of school so I could use an audiobook, but I kind of gave up because I realized that it, some people frown upon that, um, and claim that you're stupid because I still get looks to this day even though I now use audiobooks, um, thinking as like, oh, you're not that smart to be able to imagine it in your own head and be able to read it. It's, it's a comprehension problem that I have in being able to comprehend words to my brain and being able to image the story as I'm reading it in my head. But audiobooks are now more encouraged in the schools and they give you all of these different applications to be able to read books. Um, I currently read Educated off of um, Sora, which is a great application that they give you to read books and it's kind of like an online library you can borrow and read new books and stuff like that and it's not just audiobooks it's like ebooks and regular books and if you don't just want to read online they'll have a hold of paper copy um we have another one i think it's called learning ally and i haven't gotten on there but i know all my students are using it and then all the rest of these with fire and high and jake reinvented and i did read educated on there but it it got cut off for me uh i used a lot of spotify audiobooks but spotify audiobooks have a time limit of how much you can read before you have to pay for extra time and i think it's a little bit stupid to have to pay to read like you have problems reading we have to now make you pay to read uh and i wish that wasn't the case but once um once my school year is over and maybe I can't get access to this anymore, I might have to go to Audible. I don't know, and I don't really want to pay for it, but I will guess I'll do it, but I really want to continue with what I'm doing. Anyways, so not having a book collection is really interesting because I don't have anything to really choose from to read in my personal time. All of these three books I have been reading at school during when... I'm working and stuff to help students but these next two are more um, adding to my personal collection Dick reinvented first one I purchased but this one right here was the first book that I ever had in my reading collection and I think someone gave it to me as a gift I think and I've just kept it this one time every since I got rid like of my original book collection when I was younger I kept this book so me and my sister read it a lot when we were younger together and now I'm rereading it and the image of the story that comes through my head now that I'm reading it with the audiobook it's completely different from when I was younger trying to read it out loud to her 
um, just so you guys know what the book is, it's right here. Uh, this is the Castle Corona. It is by Sharon Creech, published in 2007. Um, illustrations are by David Diaz. Yes, there is illustrations in this book. Yes, it is a little bit harder for me to read because it is below my reading level it is for a reading level of grade three to seven. Considering that's probably when I got this book was between grade three and seven. It originally cost $19 at purchase. Um, but I think somebody got this for me off of eBay or something. This is an autographed copy. Um, she has her autograph in like the um, opening page. And I am halfway through this book. And I, this was like the first one that I was going after when I first started wanting to read back in September. But it was, you may say, why are you only halfway if you started in September? And that was because I had a hard time getting into wanting to read. And also this wasn't the first book that I tried reading. I tried reading an even harder book, like a really hard book that I couldn't read. I tried reading The Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens and I think I got only a couple chapters in before I had to return it because older older writings and um, older language and the way they speak in like medieval times is a little bit harder for me to understand and it's not necessarily they do that this much in this book because this obviously is for younger kids but it's uh, just a little interesting and I'm trying to soak it in all at the same time on Goodreads, this is labeled as a 3.6 starred book, and I don't have a rating yet for it. I can't exactly tell you how I feel about it because I feel like a younger person would have to rate it over me because it's for a younger rating level. The last book I have here goes into something that I've been working on that I've been enjoying. It's kind of been a hobby with inside a hobby. Uh, I don't know if a lot of you guys know about this. There's an app, but you don't necessarily need the app to do it. There's these little things called free little libraries. They're practically everywhere. You probably have seen them. They look like slightly bigger birdhouses, but they have doors and windows and inside are books that people have put in there. And what you can do is if you have a book or you can even buy a book, and you can go in there and you can look around and if you see a book that you like that you want to read you can trade the book out now i've done this approximately one two three i think like four times already three here in my own town and then this current week when i was with uh, griffin in his hometown and i just thought it was so interesting i started out with a little chapter book and i went to this one this one little um little library and i found this book right here now this is a really thick heavy duty book and i barely put a dent into it and that's because of the spotify audiobook cutting me off until tomorrow actually december 1st uh when all my hours get put back on there and then i can start reading again which is great because some of these books depending on their um the way that they are they're not on my my apps for school because why would you read them at school anyways this is called the bookstore on the beach it is by brenda novak no she's not related to me uh this was this came out in april 6 2021 i just wrote this information down as i was starting this video so i don't know a whole lot about it this book I feel like what everybody would consider to be is like an old lady's book. Like, like it may be raunchy or like just, you know what I'm talking about, like older looking books. And this is not older. This is a New York Times bestselling book um, that literally just came out like three years ago. And it would be placed there because of the size of it, but it's not. So this is about, um, the reading level is four to six graders, but, um, I may in future videos not mention reading levels just because reading levels are for when you are in school and when you're out of school, you can read whatever you want. And even when you're in school, you can read whatever you want, but, um, literature like this is considered for like 
it, an adult would read this because of the subjects that are in it. But the reading level for it is what a fourth grader to sixth grader should be able to read. Now, I wouldn't say they would want to read this because it's about um, older ladies. <laughs> uh, this book follows a lady named Autumn and her family as they move. She moves back home for the summer, I think, or something like that with her kids and uh, her husband has went missing like 18 months prior to that because he was in like I think the secret service or something and went undercover and he went missing and she has to decide whether to move on from him and give up the fact that maybe he's dead or not coming back or if she should keep on hope he comes back and people keep searching for him. So she moves back home to her mother who owns a bookstore on the beach and I think it's her aunt that's also there but I'm not sure as you can tell by how much of a dent that I have and how long it's been since I've read this book. Um, but yeah and this guy from her past that she used to like comes back into her life and she has to make that decision of whether pursuing him or to keep going on with the hope that her husband her husband will return um this book has a reader's guide on the inside so like it's very practical to have if you were to like start a book club unfortunately i don't want to start a book club with anybody with this book because of how thick it is but if anybody has read this book leave a comment down below of what you thought about it um the star review on goodreads for it is 3.8 i think that my rating might be a little bit higher at the end of it we will see because this is a really long book and I'm trying to get all these these three books that I have left to be done at least by the end of December anyways with my stories about the free little libraries I use the app sometimes sometimes I don't all the ones that I found the first one I found on the app but the rest of them I didn't because I'm used to passing them by when I would drive around so I started with a chapter book got this book and then I took a empty journal to another one which was at a church and I know what you're thinking if it's at a church there's probably a lot of religious books in there and there was because it was uh, sponsored by the Boy Scouts <laughs> and so I ended up picking up a book called The Great Baby Caper and I could not find any place other than being able to purchase it to read it and it was more like a british theme book if you have seen the book you know what i'm talking about if you haven't that's okay you probably can look it up on your own time uh but i didn't feel like reading it so i went the next day to our genealogy center that also has a library and i put that book in there and i ended up finding a all about us uh, villain couples journal where you could um, do a little activity with your couple, your partner and learn more things about them. And I did that with my sister and my boyfriend for fun. And I ended up giving that book to my sister to do with her boyfriend. And that was the end of that trail. But then yesterday, the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, um, I had another little Magic Treehouse book. I had bought it from I bought it from like Goodwill because they're super cheap and also I like to make sure that there are kids books in there that are not necessarily picture books but like chapter books are easy for them to read that they might be interested in especially books from my childhood like Magic Treehouse, The Boxcar Children, thing like that. Um, so I went to this one that was in his um, his town like right at the edge and I went up to it and it was filled with just a whole bunch of kid books and I did find a book in there that's a large print uh it's called Limitations and it's kind of a thriller book and it's part of a series I think it was like the seventh book in the series or whatever and I have it out in my car I didn't bring it in to show you guys because I wasn't sure if I would like the book or not and I don't think I will I think I will probably end up doing maybe one more run of the free little libraries somewhere in town today I don't know uh, you will see in a, any future book videos if I ended up trading that book in or if I ended up reading it so did you guys like this video I sure hope that you did because 
I am enjoying reading books and being able to share it with you guys. If you think I don't really like you doing this new hobby on your channel, go back to do whatever you were. Uh, I will continue putting cooking videos in there from time to time. I just, I hit a slump with cooking and I was trying to get out of it by doing easy recipes that I already knew how to do. And with everything going on, like the holidays and stuff, it's been a little bit more difficult for me to get things out there. And I appreciate everybody who has been like, oh yeah, just, we'll give you time. Don't worry. We love watching your videos and stuff. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. <clears throat> And if you notice this video is very plain it is because I'm trying to push it out as fast as possible in this 24 hours that I have before starting all the Christmas end of the year stuff. And so hopefully you guys don't mind my rambling because that's what I've been doing a lot. Anyways, make sure that you like this video and subscribe down below and turn on that notification bell when my new videos start to pop out and comment down below if you have read any of these books or if you have any book recommendations that you think I would enjoy. I really am hoping to get a lot of books for Christmas. I don't know about you guys, but that's what I told everybody to get me for Christmas. Anyways, I will see you guys in the next video, maybe next year. Bye.